portion of CSR. My name is Sarah Sugitan, and in this show, we have Sheena Ayratan and Janine Michelle Cavato teaching us about art and also art workshops because it's summer and a lot of kids are going through art workshops. You have an art workshop that's ongoing right now, yeah. Ira. And uh, when will that uh, finish? <laughs> it's already started. Um, we right? will culminate on April 30. So it's just a 10 day workshop. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so that's, that's very, that's in a few days' time almost. Yeah. Two weeks? Two weeks? Uh -huh. Two weeks more, and then you there will be a break, and then we'll come back. Uh, all right, and uh, ja you uh, you work with Leo DV Art Learning Center. Can you tell us more about uh, the, an art learning center? What we just do? we just opened. Mm -hmm. I'll invite you to the open house <laughs> on Saturday. It's the entire afternoon. Mm -hmm. We have art materials there, care of Lira, Joto. Mm -hmm. So it's a very good um, art medium, and then we have food. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have a lot of <laughs> art activities during the day. Mm -hmm. So what Leo the V offers is art parties. Art parties. Art okay. part. It's new in the Philippines, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of them just having birthday parties that they could just play, you know, mm -hmm. we have crafts and arts. We teach them there. But the party will be held. The party will be held in the learning center. In the learning yeah. center. We okay. also have a number of programs for older people, mm -hmm. kids at heart. <laughs> So <laughs> hey, older people go like us. Especially <laughs> those who get stuck in traffic. Mm -hmm. So how, between how, how? five to eight, oh, okay. uh, we, we teach them mm -hmm. art, uh, basic and advanced mm -hmm. drawing. Mm -hmm. So we have a number of artists mm -hmm. that are I our in-house artists mm -hmm. who do the teaching. Mm -hmm. You know, that's very good because a lot of people in Metro Manila get stuck in traffic okay. at 5 to 8 p.m. So instead of going directly... Mm, productive yeah, with yeah, your do something time. productive. Yes, do something productive mm. with the time that you'll get uh, stuck in... Rather than <laughs> get stuck in traffic. I mean, mm. in a couple of hours' time, it will be over. And I mean, the traffic will have eased up. So it's good that you... <laughs> and you release the, whatever, the energy or pent-up emotions. I would think <laughs> it's from it's work. <laughs> yeah, from work, from, uh, from yuppies and all of that. You know, life is really changing right now with technology, with... Um, you know, music is always being pirated, downloaded, etc. Is does that affect, uh, for example, uh, well, painting and art? I mean, do you have examples of students cutting and pasting and then submitting those projects to you, or uh, is technology uh, not not affecting uh, art education in, in you know a negative way? For me, it's not. It also depends on your instruction. Mm, okay. So you have to make sure that the kids would get information mm -hmm. at home so they could read books they could go to the internet for for info mm -hmm. but then um, the output you have to make sure that it's based from their mm -hmm. from what they think from their experience that it's still original yeah, that's still that it's still original you would know anyway mm -hmm. I, have you ever encountered uh, that kind of difficulty no, parang when I was teaching taste? humanities but that was for college kids. But, that, but that's for in terms of a thesis college, or yeah, a research so paper. That one you could see. You mm -hmm. could really know. But for kids, um, the art production is broken down in a series of like, three three days. Mm -hmm. So actually, I meet them once a week. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I get to see their performance. Even if they let their classmate do it for them, I would know. <laughs> <laughs> because you can identify you can identify the style the style oh, you, you can identify the style how about for two year olds two <laughs> seven year olds Ako, ano, I think everything surrounding the child um, affects the child also like mm -hmm. the music and then the technology now yeah. everybody has iPads mm -hmm. and then um, with the internet um, everything around them affects the child also but mm -hmm. um because she's handling older kids, I don't give homeworks to my kids. Mm -hmm. So okay. all projects or all activities are in school. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and then I don't really teach also cut and paste. So they're all from scratch. Mm -hmm. They make their artworks. So. Mm -hmm. All right, you you talked to us earlier about inviting parents and then you let them you discuss the artwork uh, with the parents. So. Uh, how, what are the reactions usually of the parents when they see the artwork that their children have produced during the workshop? Do they criticize, for example, or do they um, want Before to see actually having an activity with the kids, I, I have to let the parents know mm -hmm. um, what the activity is all about before we even start, just so they know what they're supposed to expect also. Mm -hmm. And I want, um, usually I ask them also, what do they expect from the child? So we converse first because um, 
some adults, they like the artwork of their child to be this way. Ganyan. Parang they have a, um, an output in mind already, which is not my style. Parang I don't like the kids to um, be compared with, like their prod products be compared with other products. Kasi it kills their creativity also, like when they're being compared. And then mm -hmm. if the intention of comparing is, is to put them down. Mm -hmm. So um, I let them know what my goals are for this um, workshop, for example. workshop, for example, and then um, just so they understand. And then when they, I invite the parents over, actually um, all the time my kids, they really like when their parents come over so mm -hmm. they can um, show their works. Mm -hmm. And then they tell stories, they really like sharing about their works, and then sometimes it'll take them even up to five minutes talking straight about their artwork. <laughs> they really like... Um, Having their parents. Yeah, around. and then I think the parents, they appreciate it if their child is happy. Mm -hmm. and of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about in high school? Do you invite parents to discuss yes, the artworks? Yes, of course. Artworks? During art exhibits, mm -hmm. uh, when I was there, we had three art exhibits. Mm -hmm. So I always invite the parents. Mm -hmm. Plus, I also ask them to sponsor the parents. <laughs> <laughs> the sponsor the food, yeah, the cocktails. <laughs> there. Yes, so but you uh, really what have are to invite. Yeah, what are the reactions of uh, of high of the parents of high school kids when they see their uh, children's art, you know, um, displayed or exhibited? I mean, some of those talented ones, the, the kids, they bring their work home. The parents are the ones who tell me, oh, she worked on that for like five hours. She didn't <laughs> study any other subject except do the artwork. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even the teachers would come to me complaining. Mm -hmm. Your <laughs> artwork, it's being done in, for example, like math class. <laughs> so then I have to talk to the channel. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> but deep inside, I'm happy. I'm like, ah. <laughs> At least the child loves what, what, mm -hmm. what the project is all about. Mm -hmm. Actually, as you said, uh, art classes only take one hour. I one mean, it's hour. just one subject of three, and then it's one out of eight uh, every hour that the, the, the high school student goes to school. Yes. Uh, do you think it should be increased? Or uh, I don't know if we're heading that direction in terms of art education, but do you think one hour is enough when it I comes to teaching high school kids? Yes, I think one hour is enough, mm -hmm. considering that I handled about 35 35 students times 18 sections. Huh? Yeah, 18 every sections. Week. Every, every week. week. Wow, that's a lot that's of a kids. Lot. That's a lot of kids. For one teacher. For <laughs> one teacher, that's a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. do, do you so if there's more, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is that's there a stress also on an art teacher, for example, when you teach when you teach art? And how do you cope with it? Is there is there such a thing as stress for an art teacher? In my case, no. It's well, always fun, and then sometimes the joy of um, being an art teacher is you never know what's going to happen in your class. Because <laughs> um, your creativity, what's in your mind, is different from each of your students. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they can come up with the craziest things, and then they tell you their stories, they tell you their dreams. So mm -hmm. it's really I know, or a learning experience also. Mm -hmm. But if it was increased to 35 sections of <laughs> I wouldn't accept that class. <laughs> <laughs> What would be the ideal size uh, art class? How many students? Uh, Depends on the age on level, the, yeah, I think. Because so for me, yeah, um, for you, for I don't want to handle ten. a class that's like um, more than 12 or something. So that's the maximum that you'd, uh, you'd allow for an art class? For, for really young for kids. Really young kids yeah. from so that you can um, attend to each one of them because maybe some <laughs> someone likes to tell a story and then, oh, teacher, I want to tell a story. Oh, teacher, I want to tell a story. It's hard to... Um, get to know all of their ideas. Yes, you will not be able to give time to each and every one yes. if they all tell stories. Yes, because they're, they're, they're really very vocal at that age. Parang sometimes they don't know how to wait for their turn, so they really want to tell their story now. Or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about in high school? What would be the ideal class, a, a size of a class? How many students <laughs> should there if be? If I were given my way, mm -hmm. about 20. 20 but students. But that's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, because you're in high school, so yeah, uh, I, I they're really a lot. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, they're really a lot. So, do you have a backlog of things to check when you get home, or not necessarily? Before, yes, but you have to really time manage. Mm -hmm. This, it's not stressful in the classroom. Mm -hmm. It's stressful because you have to meet deadlines. Your grades mm -hmm. has to be in, mm -hmm. and you have to encode it, mm -hmm. and then you have to give it back. Mm -hmm. When you give it back, you don't just give it back. You give back, and then you s you explain why. Mm -hmm. So you're supposed to. Uh, so yeah. You're, supposed, you're to supposed to give good constructive criticism, mm -hmm. or else the child will keep on repeating the same, mm -hmm. same problem, the same issue. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. But not mistake, just the same problem or the same issue. Yeah, and also to improve their technique. To improve, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, how about you, Ira? Do you have, uh, because we were discussing uh, writer's block or artist's, artist's block, is it, do you also have, do you have you ever experienced the same thing as well? Do you, is there such a thing as, you know, you want to draw, but I don't, I can't draw? Is mm. it in, your, in your personal experience as an artist? Because um, I've never really had um, parang exhibits that you have to meet a deadline. Mm -hmm. But for me, if I don't feel like, or if I don't have an idea to work with, I won't mm -hmm. do it. Or I, won't, I don't want to force myself to do something when there's no inspiration in the first place because mm -hmm. it'll just be trash for me. <laughs> parang, okay. um, I let the idea come first. Like Even if um, I'm not in the mood for painting or drawing, and then when something comes up, like if I dreamt of something, I want to draw this. Mm -hmm. So... The inspiration comes first before mm -hmm. I before you make time to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, how long does it take you to finish an artwork? Th as you said, one of your students take five days, five hours, mm -hmm. etc. How, how about you? It depends, personally? like on the size of your painting or. Mm -hmm. um, it, it depends, depends on the how inspired you are. Yes, <laughs> and then if you have a lot of time to do it. Mm -hmm. How about you, Ja? How long does it take you to, to paint or to draw? On the average. Uh, yeah, on the average. Mm. If I'm really forced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many days do you spend on One day. <laughs> oh, one day lang? You finish a painting? And no, day? because no, no, I, no. I, I work on a different medium. Mm. So I have to coil the tissue. Mm, okay. So it's sort of like a collage. And then it's a relief. It pops out. And then you have to wait for it to dry. So you really have to be patient. And the drying it period really depends on the medium. It takes long also. also. Okay. Uh, well, poets before have uh, discussed this that uh, they're more productive when they pro uh, when they're heartbroken. For example, th that's when the inspiration comes in for songs and for you know for poetry for for writers. How about for artists? For visual artists, is it the same or, or does in inspiration come regardless of a, a painful experience? <laughs> Ira, I think it's part of it because mm -hmm. really art is your expression diba, of your emotion. So sometimes, ako, I've done artworks also based on. Like when I'm really, really sad, I know the artworks that I make. Mm -hmm. And then um, sometimes I make also, I, I write songs when I'm really, really sad. Or sometimes I write songs when I'm really, really happy. So emotions are a big part of, of the creative, creative process. Mm. Yeah. How about you, Jack? Have you created artwork when you were heartbroken or when I you did. <laughs> painful experiences? It was a pastiche of <laughs> Van Gogh's Starry Night. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't star; it was black. Oh, <laughs> no, I mean, so like a starry <laughs> night. So for yeah. example, yeah, for example, that way. Mm -hmm. But you 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 see things in a gleam way, mm -hmm. it's gloomy. There. Then while you're painting, you're so emotional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it helps to release also yes. your emotions. It it helps you get on with life. And, and then uh, it keeps you also distracted. Like it's instead of thinking all those yeah. things, mm -hmm. you're doing something mm -hmm. really productive. Do you ever look at that painting again? I mean, Yes, it's up in my room. <laughs> 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 but now that you look back to it, uh, does the painting remind you of that sad part of your life? Or what do you experience when you look at your past works? Oh, I know the um, where history. each painting, yeah, mm -hmm. the history and inspiration of each painting. Mm -hmm. How about you, Ja? What do you feel when you look at your you know, past works on display? Uh, <laughs> happy that you were sad. <laughs> <laughs> sort of, sort mm. of. Happy that you were mm. sad. But at the same time, I think it's sort of like writing also. When you, when you do something, you have to leave it first. Mm -hmm. And then after an hour, maybe, you go back. Mm -hmm. If you look at it and you like it, then you're on to something mm -hmm. really nice. Mm -hmm. So at the end of it, when you go back still, after maybe a day, slip it over when you go back and then you still like it oh that's really nice mm -hmm. and you could really see that that's really nice and you're proud of it mm -hmm. then yeah. it's good mm -hmm. it doesn't yeah. matter for me it doesn't matter what anyone says yes. <laughs> if, if i really like it's it it's personal at the end of, yeah. it's very personal yeah. well thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us right here on gnn i hope you learned a lot about uh, from our guests sheena and ja thank you again for joining us right here on csr <laughs> join us again next week right here on gnn larry bruhard will join you next wednesday right here on csr thank you and good night Yeah. <laughs>